So we all know that Nick Walker has dropped out of the Olympia just a week before competing. And as we speak, it's on a Wednesday just before the Olympia. I just had a client competing in the natural, not the natural Olympia. Sorry, that was a misspeaking there. I would never have that. Uh, actually a client competing in the amateur Olympia uh, and he's doing pretty well. You should look him up. Shout out to my homie, Andrew Ooze. He is probably going to be a pro by the end of today. But moving forward, Nick Walker has blasted himself out of the Olympia line up by saying he's just not making it. If you remember from my last video on Nick Walker, he talked about specifically having some health issues, possibly not being in shape because his body just is not responding, whatever that means with someone who is at this level. I said it, it's my responsibility ultimately to protect him, his body, his image, and his health. And I hold that in very high regard. Yesterday that we are going to see Nick's physique when Nick's physique starts to respond again which is kind of weird because Greg Doucette made a really good point about this. This is his full-time job. He has virtually nothing else to do except bodybuilding. To compete unless I feel like it. Even though I committed, I signed the contract promising that I'm gonna compete. You guys don't think that these guys just compete and they can do it if they want. You commit to something and you're supposed to do it. It's his job. And I have coached bodybuilders in active duty, for example, military, including myself. I won my natural pro card in the PNBA when I was in <laughs> the active service. So like, I don't know, kind of weird. But I wanted to look at the last video he posted before his announcement and just kind of see if there was any early warning signs that were missed when he was going to to ideally compete because the shape and conditioning he was looking in in that video let me kind of know that he was definitely planning on making this announcement for a while and I wanted to see if at three weeks out we could see the early signs of him saying yep I'm putting the towel in uh. all right so we're in the thick of it now so you can already see here like honestly you can see a lot of the differences um, in his face from the video that we reviewed of his announcement. He here looks a lot, shall I say, uh, leaner. <laughs> he doesn't have that excess water retention in his face. It's not leading him to be sort of like this water buffalo, possibly. Uh, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just, you know, saying it as it is. He looks a lot leaner. I don't know. We're like 18 days out or something. So I'll just be honest. There probably won't be much talking today. I'll probably just be in the zone, making the best of these workouts. And that's going to be that, you know, you get to a point where the smile fades out a little bit. And it's just, let me get this workout in as hard as I can get it in and go home. So this is the fun part, but this is also it's time to really grind hard now. <laughs> Interesting. It does seem like he's pretty convicted. I will say that. Like, it seems like he's very convicted towards this specific goal. He doesn't seem to be dropping the mindset or attitude he's kind of always had, historically speaking, about sort of just being the killer, like showing up after year after year, just not missing a beat. But we'll see. Man, as a cameraman, I have to say this is probably the easiest job this guy's ever had to do. Just walk around and film a guy walking through his workout as if he's sloth-like. It's kind of a dream job, to be honest. Uh. Here's another thing I don't understand, and I'm sorry to say this, and it's going to piss a lot of people off. How does grunting happen? I get grunting at like max PRs and big ass weights. Like when I'm benching, you know, trying to get to four plates on the bench, like I let a little grunt, you know, <laughs> like a little grunt, like a tsh Ugh, or something like this, right? Don't fucking clip that, please. Uh, and it's okay, you know, it's heavy. With shit like this, where you're on a machine and it's supported and there's bracing and stability, I've never felt the need to grunt, even pushing the full stack. I've never felt the need to grunt. I can breathe, I don't need to grunt. I don't know where the whole grunting thing comes from because some people take it way too far. Like some people take that shit way too far. They're grunt maxic. And in the gym, they'll just literally fucking scream their lungs out. And I think that is so, so annoying. <laughs> like it gets on my nerves like nothing else has ever gotten on my nerves before. So I don't know. It's fucking weird. I don't grunt if you're at the gym. <laughs> Yay. I bet it feels really good.
I'm confused if this is a shoulder press or a chest press. Like I get how he's positioned, but it's like neither you could, it's not a, an efficient shoulder press and it's not an efficient chest press. Like it's the handles, his seat should be a lot higher. First of all, uh, it, the handles are, you know, pointing too far up. The trajectory is just not at all right with what you'd want to be chest, but it's not either right for shoulders. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to do here. It's kind of weird. Rocking that bitch out. Couple reps, couple less reps though. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh. This is about the time frame. I'll switch to more uh, machines and stuff at this point. I still use free weights, but not so often, but to be honest. For the upper chest, I feel this more than I feel free weight. This fucking feels good. He's getting really good pumps this close to a show, which is interesting because usually, I mean, usually when you're you're prepping, um, you don't feel great at all. Like you feel pretty garbage most of the time when you're trying to do things like this. Prep gets super lean and you're unable to get a pump. So unless he's taking a massive swath of drugs, which I have no doubt in my mind that he's taking, it is quite interesting to say that he's kind of getting a pump and feeling pretty good. Notably though, his face and jawline is completely leaner. So I wouldn't say at this point he's necessarily given up on the prep. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how you guys watch this shit. And like with the yeah. grunting, I can't. I feel a little bit on a different spectrum of sexuality when I do this shit. This close. I still want to push weight, but I also want to make sure I'm squeezing the muscle really fucking hard. Really getting all that blood in there. Really make sure I'm squeezing, trying to get out all the detail. Now we went pretty heavy on the first one, so here we'll still go heavy. Like I want, and heavy is rel rel or relative, right? Because you could do a 15 reps with something heavy, 12 reps with something heavy. But let's just say you do 12 reps, but you have like five more in the tank. It's not heavy, you know. Get a nice heavy twelve. Why talk about this shit like? I don't know. And this is going to sound fucked up again, and I'm not criticizing bodybuilding, but bodybuilders more specifically. They always talk about their workouts like they're the most intricate, complicated, nuanced thing in the world. Like, bro, you just did two chest presses, okay? He's saying you got to train heavy. He's saying, you know, he's getting the blood in there to get the detail. Like, this is all just hearsay. I don't know why bodybuilders say these things. I mean, I get it. They're trying to articulate their thought process behind things, but at the same time, they're trying to, like, the matter of the fact is, hey, I'm just doing a chest press <laughs> you know like i'm just pressing with my chest to uh, ideally maintain the muscle i have in my chest it is not going to get any detail out uh, at, at all uh, there's not going to be any direct fat loss mechanisms happening from just pressing through a machine press so i don't know it's it's weird to me how like functionally they try to explain things and it's in reality it's just like you're going to the gym like a lot of the rest of the population does it's just you have a ton of anabolics in your system you have a ton of food and you're probably training a bit harder than the rest of them but regardless you're doing the same thing everyone else is doing Yeah. <laughs> Can go a long way. I think science is science. Can't really argue it. But science doesn't know everybody's body. So that's why I call it bullshit with science. Like for example, I've always said if something feels good, you got a good pump, everything's working, keep doing it. Why are you gonna stop? And if a certain movement, you know, whatever you, you're supposed to train, if you're not really feeling it, it's not working, who says you gotta fucking do it? Nobody. For example, the past couple of chest workouts I had, I haven't really been connecting well with a lot of flies, fly movements. So I'll probably end up doing just one fly movement today and more pressing. And so far, I have the biggest pump right now by pressing. Flies, I don't really get a massive pump. That's why I'm gonna end with them and see if that works a little better, but. Right now, I got the biggest pump, but, you know, being three weeks out, I got a solid fucking pump here, so. Okay, I'll say like pumps do matter. You know, a lot of people say they don't matter, but they do matter for sure. They're like a very real component of bodybuilding and it's why you hear every bodybuilder in the world talk 
about them and there's a lot of people saying you know feelings don't matter based around your muscles and this has been proven in clinical literature and sure it has but i would argue that they have a larger sample size being that of almost every bodybuilder talking about pumps and then trying to chase that pump to some degree being an effective way to stimulate mass but i'll also say what he's suggesting here isn't rocket science either and i think a lot of people approach this thinking wow nick is so smart or wow like all these guys are so intuitive and it's just like he's saying do what your body enjoys and that's like pretty much it which again okay that's that's what you should be doing you know it's not rocket science uh anybody should be doing this whether they're in prep out of prep a bodybuilder or not a bodybuilder do what your body enjoys there's no written rule you gotta do things a certain way so that's why it's called bullshit I agree with that. I think there is no written way to do things. And a lot of the times people get caught up in what to do that is right or wrong. And I would actually say that there is no right and wrong. And time and time again, we see this in both trained individuals in studies and non-trained individuals. We see this in, you know, actual, you know, enhanced athletes versus non-enhanced athletes. People of all demographics do things entirely wrong and still make exceptional progress. People of all demographics do things entirely right and essentially make no progress. I don't think it's actually a matter of if you're doing things right or wrong. I think it's actually a matter of just are you doing the things you need to be doing consistently and do you have the genetics to be able to do those things for a long enough time and if the answer is yes no matter who you are or what you're doing you're going to grow it doesn't matter what kind of training split you have it doesn't matter what kind of diet like philosophy you have it's all the same shit at the end of the day and people like to sell their blue pills to everybody and say this is the way this is the exercise this is the training method this is the diet this is the this is what said so said in the study this is what you know whatever and it's just it's complete horseshit because at the end of the day again we have thousands if not millions of people in this demographic that we can look upon and see that virtually everything works everything and it's just a matter of finding what works for you what do you prefer to do and if you can prefer to do something in a specific way and you can do it over a long enough time horizon you're going to make progress that's it full stop period you don't need to get into the science of understanding what science says about certain exercises what you need to do is understand how your body responds to certain exercises yes understanding muscle physiology is important like the mechanisms behind hypertrophy muscle tension etc but the actual exercise science in which you're taking apart certain movements volume etc i don't actually think it applies much to anyone who's trying to build muscle as long as you do what you enjoy thoroughly. Hey. I can't. I can't. I'm out. Got to say something prophetic. You see this? I'm happy. It fell with this up. Because if it fell the other way, where this is all hitting the ground, now I gotta put it on top of where I put my lips. So normally I'm not lying, normally if it drops like this, I just throw it the fuck out. Yeah. If it drops, you know, with this one, I'm like, okay, I'm good. All right, that was good there. We're gonna use this prime flat press. So now what we did, we did an incline, we did a decline, now we're gonna do a flat. And then the uh, fly that we'll probably do next, we'll probably end with a, um, Jesus Christ. I'm thinking an incline fly of some sort. So, I mean, he's doing like, he did four sets on each. So he's doing four, eight, 12, then he's gonna do the flies. I mean, that's a shit ton of chest volume, dude. I would rather split that up and then do it throughout the week for me personally, but. You, you, you know what you gotta remember? When I hit shoulders again, I do a little bit of chest. Okay, so he's even doing more chest. So I'm only doing one exercise. So there might be like where I do like, you know, a fly. But for the main chest movement, for the main chest day, I'm just gonna do what I feel fucking works. And I, that's why like, I think people that overcomplicate training, it, it's not fun. Training's fun, like I, I know I probably get a lot of shit for this, Simply because like, oh, well, how do you progress if you don't do the same movements over and over again? Huh? I get it, and it, and it makes sense. I'm not, it's not wrong. But I've been training however the fuck I really wanted since I started. I don't think it's done me any wrong. I would agree. I would agree with him. We just talked about this. I would also agree, though, his perspective is a lot more clouded than most people's because obviously he's superior in his genetics and his response to things like pharmacology, training, and everything. So yeah, for him, he could kind of just take it lackadaisically and whimsically and go train whatever, whenever, eat whatever, do whatever kind of drug, and it's going to generally work. My grandma could coach Nick Walker to his pro card if she just gave him enough drugs at the end of the day. But I would agree that, like I just said, doing things for fun is probably the thing that's going to actually keep you in the game the longest, which is probably going to be the thing that actually makes the most progress for you. Yeah. So this is one of those things where I say, don't fix what ain't broke. Other ways to improve that I could probably do better. Fuck yeah, of course. But as far as like, I don't know, coming in here and doing the same movement day after day. Listen, I'll get bored. And that's just facts. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah. There's always 
How does a man... I'm, look, no hate, right? You do you, King. But how the fuck are we getting 58k views on these kind of videos where at least 75% of the video is grunting and there's people out there who put hours into their videos and they only get like 10k. <laughs> that being said, so far, this chess routine that I've done today, I thoroughly enjoy. So my next chess day, I'll probably do it again. Until I'm like, I don't want to do this no more, I'm going to shut up. But I just, uh, I think people, I don't want to say people overcomplicate, but I just think people just, they, they, what's the right word I'm looking for? I, I drew a blank, but just, just fucking have fun. You know, I get it, it's prep. We're serious. Yeah, ha, I'm always serious. People call me robotic, I don't got feelings. Bah. But this is the fun part. If training is- So if it's the fun part, why'd you drop out, my homie? Is it fun? Yo, you fucking up. We all know cardio sucks. We all know dieting sucks balls. This is where the fun part should be. Cause I'll tell you what, this is where I'm happiest. I'll go home after this and I'm like this. <laughs> if, you, if this ain't fun, go home. Ugh. We'll go up a little bit. I'll probably do a, I already did a job. I'll do, depending on how many I get, I'll do a rest pause. Uh. I mean, his body's not responding. He's obviously going through a lot of stress. He mentioned that, like, simply put, his body's just not losing weight. But he's pushing himself this hard in the gym, which I get, right? You need to push yourself when you're trying to compete in a professional sport. But at the same time, it's like if you saw your body wasn't responding and you knew there was a lot of stressing happening, wouldn't you, like, pull back on the volume just a little bit? You know, just allow yourself to recover a little bit more. Maybe, hey, man, we're only going to do three working sets. It's enough to maintain muscle. It's going to keep stress down. It's going to keep you in a better headspace we're, we're gonna rock and roll with this right i mean from my perspective that's what i would have done would it have been hard for him to have followed sure but i would admit that the activity that he's doing right now for his big ass body is probably a bit too much for where he's currently at you probably don't need to be doing this much there's no extra benefit to doing extra repetitions extra sets when you're face deep in a deficit you know using drugs to maintain all the muscle mass you have you just need to do the bare minimum right now recover as best as you can and then get the fuck out basically you know and, and i think he's just doing way too much but what do i know i'm not an olympian coach who's you know killed many people or something like that oh, oh. Ah. Oh, so rest pause, I went a little uh, times, especially good. in the off-season prep. If you are going to do an intensifier, I do think drop sets can serve more of a benefit. Just in an injury perspective, you're dropping the load because rest pause, you're, you're keeping the same the same weight. So being, you know, getting to that dried out spot and everything else in prep, not going to work, but prone, putting you at a little more of a risk. So, but I think if you are going to do a rest pause, I see no problem with doing it. Just maybe do it a little lighter of a rep range than if you were to go super, super heavy. That's all. I agree with that. I think, you know, things like my rep sets, rest pauses, cluster sets, these things actually have a pretty valid place in prep. Not to add sort of junk volume, but just to keep the muscle stimulated, but uninjured. And a lot of people will try to, you know, there's a saying that people always use in bodybuilding, like, um, what is it? Take the girl that you brought to the prom to dance or something, leave with the girl you came with, some shit like this, uh, where you basically have to keep hitting PRs all prep. You have to keep your strength up all prep. And then, you know, you're just supposedly supposed to walk on stage still hitting your maxes from when you were in your off season. I think that's completely valuable. Uh, you don't need to do that. It's pretty clear that your body will still respond even with lesser load. Uh, and cluster sets or one of these variations is a really good way to just stimulate but not annihilate and cause injury from those heavy loads where you have less integrity within your joints and tissues. Mass moves mass. And when you lose a lot of mass and you try to still lift the same mass that you were moving, you become a lot more fragile. So I think it's a good point to make where you could say, hey, cluster sets are probably going to be more effective for most people in terms of a prep situation because they do limit the risk of overloading and then therefore injuring and seen it a lot of times honestly i've had to client tear his abductors just because he was doing the uh ad ductor machine and and literally blew his abductors out trying to lift the weight he was in the off season so it's a real thing and youtube's gonna eat this shit up copyright my asshole um. They copyrighted him because the audio stopped. <laughs> they must have just removed this because, like, the copyright system got him. Know that. Press done. We'll do one shoulder movement. You guys know that. One to dumbbell. Side laterals. Three, four sets. 12, 15 reps. Not crazy. Not until failure. Just want to put some blood in there. So I know my waist is shrinking. These shorts are getting too big. Brother. Brother. 
Your hips might be shrinking, but we all just saw that that video. Okay. Don't fool yourself, homie. Don't fool yourself. <sighs> like I said, if if Nick Walker was in the right mind or his coach, whoever, he would be fasting, you know, doing a five on two off approach where he eats for five days, fasts for two days, it's for five days, fast for two days. He would go down to TRT, he would lose a ton of mass, and then he would try to rebuild his physique, but differently with less food and depending more on muscle memory to build his physique than drugs, food, and all that other bullshit. Because he needs to shrink that waist. If he shrunk that waist, his legs would look impressive. Right now they look atrocious. He needs to get rid of that visceral fat. He needs to get rid of his fatty liver disease. He needs to get rid of these things that we all know he has because it's the only way you would have a gut protrusion like this. He needs to fix it. But I don't think he ever will because his mindset is just eat food, train, eat food, train, take drug, eat food, train. And that will fuck you up. He's talked about being a robot. That's not a good thing. Like, I I'm sorry, guys. People think that's a good thing in a bodybuilder. That's not a good thing. Yes, it's repetition is good to a certain extent. But you also have to realize when that repetition needs to be broken because it's creating a, it's, a, it's a problem. It's a, it's a Swiss cheese model, right? Uh, let's say you start with a Swiss cheese slice and you keep stacking Swiss cheese slices on top of each other. At some point or another, a hole in the Swiss cheese is going to line up between all the slices. And that's the big error. You keep carrying that error along as you keep through your model and that repetition keeps forming. And eventually when the repetition stops, that hole clears out, huge error happens. Fatty liver disease, heart attack, disease, all this shit that we don't want to see people experiencing in a sport because it creates such a bad fucking name. It would be awesome if they paid attention to it and actually addressed the issues, which, yeah, might require you to take three steps back, but you're going to take six forward. So tough. Straight up just breathing in the mic, man. Come on. <sighs> More chest? Brother, give yourself a rest, homie. That's how you're gonna get better. Huh. All right, that's it. That wraps up today's chest, biceps, and a little delt workout. Um, so yeah, we are a little under three weeks now. Things are moving and grooving. Matt's happy with where I'm at. I'm happy with where I'm at, so we'll be ready. And you know, I don't need to, you all right, buddy? Cameraman's choking. You got, got a drink? Yo, so yeah, that's, that's really it, you know, I'm usually, I usually have something slick to say you know, at the end of these videos, but at this point, y'all will see. And that's where we'll leave it at. Damn, that's awkward. Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't think he was like ready to quit three weeks ago. If you ask me, he was still in the mindset. He was still ready to go. And then something happened between three weeks out and one week out. What happened? I don't know. Again, I think my speculation is he got some fake gear. He emotionally couldn't handle it for whatever particular reason. He was afraid he was going to lose. He had some major health issues, which is a big likelihood. Or Matt just fucked him over somehow. Those are the options, that I, the way that I see it. Because this guy's got a full-time job of being a bodybuilder, something that many people would kill for on this world. And he pulls out a second year in a row the week before a show. I mean, that's huge. So I think there's definitely some more going on to this. It didn't seem like he was ready to buy out here. So something between one week out and three weeks out happened in there where something catastrophically went wrong. And it had to be big, right? Because there's no way that he would just drop out of a show this fast for no particular reason and start crying on camera about it. There had to be something big. And whether that was his emotions because he knew he wasn't going to win, whether that was him getting fake gear, whether that was some serious health issues, we won't know. I, I doubt we'll know for a long time. I doubt Nick will bring it up for a long time. And look, I don't blame him. It's not our business, but it would be nice to know because we're all here watching him, you know? Just sitting here like waiting for something because it is important because you know matt jansen does have deaths on his record and uh we certainly don't want that happen to nick walker so like comment subscribe do the thing